Good morning and welcome to Jehovah Jireh Bible Church. I'm your lead servant pastor, Andre Andrews. It's truly our honor and our pleasure to welcome you into this virtual sanctuary this morning. Uh, three quick things before we get started. If you hit the like, share, and subscribe button, it will be greatly appreciated by doing so. You move the algorithm, which uh, uh, puts out more content of Jehovah Jireh Bible Church, which opens up ministry tools and evangelism tools to the sharing of, gospels of, of, of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So thank you in advance for hitting the like, share, and subscribe button. Before we get started this morning, let us, uh, let us dive into prayer. Uh, prayer is so um, essential for the Christian life, for uh, even the lives of those who are uh, struggling to uh, get into relationship with uh, Jesus Christ. So let us pray. Eternal Master, we thank you, O oh God. We thank you for this is the day that you have made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, we thank you that you woke us up this morning, Lord. We thank you that you gave us the faculty of our, our limbs, Lord, that we are clothed in, in our right minds, Lord, that we can uh, rest assured that you are with us. Lord, thank you for the joy that you have given us, Lord, and the person of the Holy Spirit that is imputed in us, that lives in us that leads and guides us into all truth lord thank you that our joy our peace is not predetermined by any earthly circumstances any outcomes not our financial uh portfolios lord not our not our status in the earth but it's all because the living god lives in us Lord, thank you for the privilege of rest, ruling, and abiding in us, Lord. Oh, wretched men and women we are, but Lord, thank you for the righteousness that we now have through the blood of Jesus Christ, Lord. We are so thankful, Lord. If we had 10,000 tongues, truly, we could not thank you enough for what you have already done, Lord. You have kept us from dangers seen and unseen, Lord. You take care of the elderly, the sick, Lord, the, 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 the disenfranchised, Lord. You are our all in all. Lord, thank you for being a God that is all sufficient, that you cover every area of our lives even when we don't see it. Lord, forgive us for our unthankfulness, Lord, that we would become more thankful for the things that you do, Lord. Let us have a heart of gratitude, Lord. Let us have a sense of humility always, Lord, because you are always working on our behalf, Lord. Even in our testing and our trials, Lord, it's all for the perfecting of us, Lord, that you are removing out the impurities that, that live in us, Lord, the sin that we battle with, the, the war that's raging inside of us, Lord, that you want to have dominance in our lives, Lord, that there would be, there would be relationship, that we would understand that through you, only through you, Jesus, that we will see the Father. So, Lord, we just thank you for the sacrifice you made for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you would, turn to Revelation chapter 19, and we're going to track through verses 11 through uh, 16 this morning. That's Revelation 19. And we're going to read verses 11 through 16. I'll be reading out of the NIV version of Scripture. So if you have your Bibles, your tablet, whatever you have God's Word on it, please turn to Revelation chapter 19, verses 11 through 16. I have a mantra that I do before every preaching moment. If you would raise your Bibles above your heads and repeat after me, living water, living water, fill us till we thirst no more. And our scripture reads again from uh, Revelation chapter 19, verses 11 through 20, reads as follows. I saw heaven standing open, and there before me was a white horse whose rider was called Faithful and True. 
with justice he judges and wages war. His eyes are like blazing fire, and his head are and on his head are many crowns. He has a name written on him that no one knows but himself. He is dressed in a robe dripped in blood, and his name is the word of God. The armies of heaven were were following him, riding on white horses and dressed in fine linen and white white and clean. Coming out of his mouth was a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron, with an iron scepter. Uh, he threads the winepress of the, of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. On his robe and on his thigh, he has a name written, and it is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. May he been blessed by the hearing and the reading of God's holy word for a subject titled this morning, Jesus Still Sits on the Throne. Jesus Still Sits on the Throne. Let us pray. Eternal Master, we, I thank you, O oh God. I thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to handle your sacred oracles. Lord, I am dust before you, O oh God. Without you, I am nothing, Lord. I stand before you as an empty vessel, Lord, waiting to be filled up by you, Lord. Work in me and through me and hide me behind Calvary's bread of cross, Lord. I know my imperfections. I know that I am flawed. I am a mere mortal, but the power only comes from you, Lord. So I pray, Lord, that you would bestow unto me, Lord, a fresh anointing, Lord, fresh eyes, Lord, clear thought, Lord, to concisely convey your word, Lord, that it penetrates, that it is the sharp sword of the word of God, that it cuts away the exterior, Lord, that it hits the hearts of men, Lord, that it would open their eyes to the revelation that you are the King of kings, Lord of lords, Lord. Let your word go out and return not to you, boy, but accomplish everything you intended. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Jesus still sits on the throne. In a world filled with chaos and uncertainty, we find comfort in these words, in the sovereignty of God that he says that he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. What exactly does that mean? It is very important for the Christian to understand that Jesus is, is and the significance of his role as king. In the book of Revelations, we read that Jesus is not only a king, but he is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Let us explore this morning what that actually means. Now, I'm going to be tracking through various scriptures this this morning to uh, to prove this uh, this this truth and this argument to you that Jesus is the King of Kings and He is the Lord of Lords. First, we need to understand that that Jesus' kingdom is not of this world. When Jesus was on earth, He proclaimed and. In the book of uh, John, uh, John 18 and 36 to be exact, he says, My kingdom is not an earthly kingdom. If it were, my followers would have fought to keep me from being handed over to the Jewish leaders. But my kingdom is not of this world. What does this mean? This means that Jesus' kingdom is not a physical kingdom like on earth, but Jesus' kingdom is a spiritual kingdom that is based on love, grace, and righteousness. Love, grace, and righteousness. Not only is his kingdom based on love, grace, and righteousness, Jesus' kingdom is not of this world. And Jesus is also 
a humble king. Not haughty, not puffed up, but a humble king. Second, we see that Jesus is the humble king in, in Philippians ver, uh, chapter 2, verses 6 through 8. We see Jesus, as we read, as Paul pens, through, he, he, says that, he says this, Though he was God, he did not think himself in equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took on a, he took on the role as a humble uh, the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in a, in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God. He died a criminal's death on a cross. Jesus did not come to earth to be served, but to serve others. He showed what it means to be a true leader who serves in humility and in love. Jesus is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Thirdly, we see this. We see, we see in Revelations uh, 19 and 16 from our from our uh, foundational text. Jesus is the King of Kings and he is the Lord of Lords. We read on his robe and on his thigh is written the title King of King, Lord of Lords. This is not just the title. This is not just the title, ladies and gentlemen, but, but, it, but a reality that Jesus is, all, is the ultimate authority that the one who reigns over all of creation and he is the one who has all power to save our sins and to give us eternal life. All authority has been given to Jesus. Listen, in Matthew 8, uh, 28 and 18 reminds us that Jesus has been given all authority in heaven and on earth. He is the ultimate ruler guiding history towards its ultimate goal. His kingdom knows no borders. His reign extends to every corner of the universe. Jesus is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We have a different citizenship if we belong to Jesus' kingdom. Finally, as believers in Jesus Christ, we are citizens of his kingdom. In Philippians 3 and 20, we read, but we are citizens of heaven where the Lord Jesus Christ lives and we are eagerly waiting, waiting for him to return as our savior. This means that we are no longer citizens of the world, but we are God, we are citizens of God's kingdom. We have been adopted into the family and given new identity in Christ. So when chaos and uncertainty befalls you and you don't know what to do, you're looking here and you're looking there, there's only one destination to look to, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, which is Jesus Christ. Jesus is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He is the ultimate authority, the one who reigns over all of creation, but he is also a humble king, one who serves others with love and compassion. As citizens of, of his kingdom, we have, we have been given a new identity in Christ. Let us embrace the truth and live our lives as faithful followers of the king. We, 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 we may serve others in humility and love just as Jesus did. And we must always remember that our true home is in the kingdom of God with the king of kings and the Lord of lords. We have to submit ourselves to his, to his authority. Surrendering, surrendering and yielding to, to live by his guidance. We must worship him with reverence and honoring his majestic power. We have hope 
that we can find confidence in the reign of knowing that he is truly in control. We can follow him in, 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 in obedience and his commands, living out his lordship. Jesus is the king of kings and he is the Lord of lords. We, we can look all throughout scripture as we, as we see this verified of Jesus' position as the king of kings and the Lord of lords. In, in different in various texts throughout throughout scripture I, I'll just give you a few more uh, scriptures before we close just to let you know what type of God you serve what type of king you serve one that is humble one is one that's not self-serving one that serves others one that loves all that sits on the throne he is still seated seated on the throne. Jesus is the King of Kings and he is the Lord of Lord. Don't feel downtrodden today if you just feel uncertain that you don't know what's before you. It's written in the text. Jesus is going to do exactly what he said he will do. All we have to be is faithful, and his name is faithful and true. If we are engrafted into the family of God, we have to have the same ideology, the same thought that he is the truth, the way, and the life. He is the sovereign God and the King of kings and the Lord of lords. 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 15 which he will display at a proper time. He who is the blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, Hebrews 1 and 8, but of the Son, he says, your throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of, of, of righteousness is, is the scepter of your kingdom. Matthew 27 and 37, and over his head, they put the charge against him, and they read that Jesus is the king of the Jews, Revelation 15 and 3, and we sing the song of Moses, the servant of the God, a servant of God, and a song of the Lamb, saying, great and amazing are your deeds, O God, O Lord God, the Almighty, just and true, and your ways, O King of all the, all the nations. Mark 15 and 32. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross, that they may see and believe those who were crucified with him also revealed. And back to our foundational text. From his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nation. And he will rule them with a rod of iron. He would tread the wide press of the, fear, of the fury of the wrath of the mighty God. And his robe and his, on, on his robe and his thigh, he has a name written the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I implore you today, ladies and gentlemen, to add ease, to add peace, to add joy to your spirit. Surrender yourselves today to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He's still seated on the throne. His position has not changed. He is coming back for his. He's coming back for a church without spot nor wrinkle. He's coming back as the bridegroom, coming back for, for the sardness, his bride, his church. He's in, in, in heavy expectation to come for his people. So rest in assurance, not in the uncertainty. Rest in the assurance and the hope that Jesus Christ is exactly who he said he is. He is the King of Kings, and he is the Lord of Lords. That's why on a Friday on a hill called Golgotha, Jesus the Christ was nailed to a cross. He was nailed to a cross and lifted up high. He was lifted up high because the scripture declares that if he be lifted up, speaking of Jesus, that he would draw all men to him. 
He was pierced in his side. He dies. He dies for the remission of our sins. Nothing that we could do on our own. It was a free gift of grace and love from God. He pierced in his side. Jesus dies. He gets up on the third day with all power in his hand, power for restoration, power to be engrafted back into the family of God. Nothing you did on your own, but a free gift from God. Take the gift that has freely been given. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I'm Pastor Andre Andrews of Jehovah Jireh Bible Church. I love you and there's nothing you can do about it.